Uh, speaker, both statements which have been made by the leader of majority and the chairman for the Committee for Finance are very, very important statements. In fact, I think in another 10, 20 years' time, when we look back at the statements which have been made in this house today by the two uh, distinguished senators, uh, we will know the importance of these two statements because they go to the core of our own constitutional dispensation and structure of government. Mr. Speaker, I want to speak generally because uh, there are those two statements that have been made, but speak to the point. And I urge my brothers and sisters, distinguished senators, uh, to remember the words of uh, Michelle Obama, that when they go low, we go high. I would urge you, let us not look like we are discussing the National Assembly. The issue that we're discussing is the matter that goes to the core of the Constitution. And this Constitution was enacted in order to avoid concentration of power in any one institution. In fact, sometimes some people believe that there's a lot of power in the presidency under this Constitution. Even under this Constitution, those powers were distributed to independent offices, to commissions, which are set out in Chapter 15. Under the old constitution, the legislative authority of the republic was only in the National Assembly. But that power has now been distributed between the legislatures at the national level and at the county level, and at the national level must be shared between the Senate and the, 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 the National Assembly. And, and therefore, I, I feel very, very sad having had some of the comments that are made in the National Assembly. There's a famous play by Shakespeare called Hamlet, and uh, it, is, uh, it is not without significance that uh, Shakespeare chose one of the characters who was just a palace guard to comment on what was happening in the kingdom of uh, Denmark at that time. And he said, what's with this effect? that there's something rotten in the state of Denmark. I am beginning to believe that there's something rotten in Kenya because when we are trying to make things work, some people don't want institutions to work. And I am happy that the, the chair of BBI is here yeah, in a, <clears throat> an effort to try and make things work. The parliament and senate and the national assembly, there is a mechanism to make sure that we work as an institution. There is no law that is made in the Republic of Kenya which is made is, is, is titled law or, or a statute enacted by the National Assembly. If you go to the statute books, you go to the Constitution itself, the National Assembly has no capacity to make any law under the Constitution of Kenya. The laws in Kenya are made by Parliament. And that is why it is important that, that in every bill, leave, leave alone the Division of Revenue Bill, that they must seek the concurrence of the Speaker of the Senate. That is the only route under which you can have an enactment that becomes the law of Kenya. And the arguments which have been brought out in the National Assembly, for example, they are saying that we cannot summon cabinet secretaries. Senator Murkomen has talked about the general section, Article 125, which allows us to summon everybody. But when it comes to cabinet sectors under Article 153, sub Article 3, it says that cabinet sectors shall present themselves both to the National, uh, the, uh, the National Assembly and the Senate when re they are required. And there's no distinction. All cabinet sectors are required to appear before the Senate where they are required. And if there is anybody who uh, is in doubt, read that particular section, and they actually they are supposed to give quarterly reports. Each cabinet secretary, they are supposed to give quarterly reports to both houses, uh, not just the National Assembly, but also to the, to the Senate. I would urge the leadership in the National Assembly to read the Constitution holistically. The Constitution is not supposed to be read like some people who read the Bible and only can memorize one verse. I would remind them that if you want to apply the Constitution properly, understand it from Article 1 to the last article, then you will know how to apply 
the Constitution. For example, Mr. Speaker, if you leave, read the provisions that deal with national security, the appointment of the Inspector General, the reporting uh, under the security organs of the state, the place, the central place of the Senate is recognized because this Constitution wants a devolved system of government. And therefore, the Division of Revenue Bill, which has not been enacted with the concurrence of the Senate, the Mediation Committee not having agreed, cannot create a basis for unilaterally uh, the enactment of an, an Appropriations Act. In the United States, we see quite often, uh, you know, the, the, the entire uh, federal government uh, is sent off because, you know, the parliament has not, has not passed an Appropriations Act. The whole government goes away, uh, you know, in, in respect of the Constitution. And here, we pass an Appropriations Act, which is contrary to the Constitution, contrary to the Public Finance Management Act, and we support just to laugh. Me, I would want to advise my friends in the, uh, in the other house. We have seen people talking the way they are talking many, for many years. We have seen many. And the person who said power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely is damn right because the, the language they are speaking, they are languages of autocrats, not of Democrats who know why parliaments are established. And the way they speak about the, 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 the Senate is so demeaning. I will never speak about an institution of, of government in such, a, in such terms, be it the judiciary, I will speak about it with respect, be it the presidency, but for somebody to say that Senate is an idle institution, that kind of person did not take a proper oath because that oath requires him to defend and protect the Constitution. And that Constitution protects the Senate and the counties. And if they continue with that language, it means that they want to kill devolution. They want to kill devolution. And Article 10 of the Constitution says one of the principles of governance is the devolution of power. Late Kajuang used to talk every time about the dev devolution, dispersal of power, division of power. And we now we have a National Assembly who do not see the role of the Senate. The role of the Senate was seen by those who made this Constitution, knowing that there are times when the participation of the two houses would be very, very, very important. In fact, the participation of the Senate is a quality control eh? because, you know, in the other house, bills are passed, you know, sometimes without having a constitutional threshold. Our bills are, are passed through a constitutional threshold and are accountable to the counties because every member of this assembly, this Senate, how you vote is a matter of public notoriety. Somebody can go to the record to determine how you voted. So being accountable, we are very careful the way we vote. And this is the house where there must be some level of quality control. If you go to France, the role of the Senate, in fact, uh, when we went for a visit there one time and we were taken through the motions, they say the most intricate legislation must go through the Senate because they say that is a house where a lot of hours can be spent with the amount of detail that, that they will require before a complicated legislation can be passed. You can see in the United States of America, in the Philippines, how the two houses relate to build a better country and a better uh, re republic. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, I would not want to take a lot of time because there are a lot of people who want to speak to the point, but uh, I, I am saying this that uh, there are some people who are forgetting about this new environment that we have so that we are able to resolve things in accordance with the law and, and, and the Constitution. Uh, name calling is not going to help. And the solution to this matter is to bring back an act or a legislation to, to cure what has already been done. But I support those that now that they have shown us the knife, we have no alternative but to go to court and have this matter determined 
once and for all. And I hope that every member of this Senate will not hesitate in a week or 10 days' time when this matter is taken to court. We need to be together in this otherwise. They will kill this Senate like the one they killed many, many, many years ago. And that Senate used to, to sit here. And uh, it would be a great tragedy that those who fought for this Constitution would see the Senate and the evolution die. Because if you deny counties funds, the, resu the resultant effect is that you don't want those counties to operate. And therefore, I, I, I appreciate the statement made by the Chair Finance. It is a well-considered statement, and it should be attached to the pleadings that we are going to file in court. Uh, I think you are going to be cited, that statement is going, going to be cited in a judgment because it's a well thought out statement and sets out the law as to how to handle the division of revenue bill before the budget process proper begins. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.